Hi, I'm Jeff Ganoss, Worldwide Product Marketing Manager for the iGen family of products, and I'm here at the Gill Hat Center today with Scott Stevenson, who is our technical specialist for the iGen family of products, and he's going to give us an underneath the hood look of the paper path of the iGen technology. Scott? Great, thanks for having me, Jeff. First, let's look at the paper tray capability. First, we have the ability to handle up to 14 and a third wide by 26 inches long, all the way down to seven inches by seven inches. And Jeff, our speed will vary based on the paper length. We're not bucketing our production speed into certain sheet sizes. We will increment that speed based on paper length. So Scott, when you talked about that you had to go from a large sheet size to a small sheet size, when an operator does that, don't they have to adjust nips or adjust different grippers for that particular sheet or not? No, it's all being done dynamically. So basically where the system is smart enough to know what paper size is coming through the system and how to handle that paper at the fastest speed possible. So that means that the operator makes the adjustments of the guides, puts the door on, runs. Simple as that, absolutely. You can absolutely. go from one sheet to the other without any downtime uptime productivity. Running at rated speed. Another consideration, Jeff, is going to be this, this the, the paper caliper. We talked just now about paper length, but there's no downtime or loss of productivity as it relates to the caliper. So, the so Scott, wait a minute. Sorry. So when you said that, if I have a lightweight paper up on the top, a heavyweight paper down on the bottom, and we talk about mixed sheet jobs all the time. So are you telling me there's the machine's not going to go down, cycle, have to do any adjustments in order to run those two different caliper sheet sizes? No, once again, it's done automatically. There's no job set up, there's no cleaner sheets, it's not bucketing in, you into uh, having to make impression cylinder changes in between uh, paper, paper calipers. It's all treating this, it knows what paper is coming through and it treats the paper accordingly. So you mean you're saying that? A, a person could set up a job with two different sizes, print it, go away, and he's not going to have to worry about the anything he's going to have to do for those two sheets. Nope, there's no compromise That's in that, great. Jeff. That's Next, great. let's take a look at another critical piece. Is going to be the, the turning radius. You know, our paper path is actually sh very straight, Jeff, and that's critical on, on handling very thick paper such as this, coming around a, a wide turning radius into a straight paper path allows us to handle grain grain right or wrong this is a very big contributing factor to so handling you, uh, paper of different uh, of different substrates beyond paper but Scott you talked about you made a point of this wide radius why is that wide radius so important well Jeff it's going to give you reliability these systems are running 24 7 they're running different medias app different kinds of applications a lot of it depends on the backbone of our configuration. Can we handle the wide variety of stocks? And so, the answer is yeah, and this is a big contributing factor. So that's going to help with minimizing jams. Again, downtime, it's going to allow, that's what really allows reliably to go from those different calipers from the lower weight to the higher weight. Those radiuses allow to be confident that we're not going to be jamming. Yeah, and then it's all servo driven, Jeff. Once the paper comes into this paper path, it's being managed through servo motors. There's no gripper allowing you to get maximum area coverage. It's very reliable. So I'm seeing this very long and straight paper path. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, so Jeff, we're going to come down out of, that, out of those paper trays and we're going to come straight through. And then as we come around the bottom side, we're going to tumble the paper invert it and then come back for side two printing. So again, straight paper handling on a very robust paper path allows us again to run very heavyweight stock. So you, you've been around a lot of digital devices. Does it look like a really a lot of thought went into the paper path and minimizing jams when you look at this design? Absolutely. The big consideration here on this configuration was to really get into that commercial print market where papers such as this are the ones that are commonly used. Off cuts, plastics, polyesters, vinyls are all very dependent on a very robust and reliable paper path. Because if you can't print it reliably, why do it? That's right. Tell me about the uh, fusing system. All right, Jeff, as we come down here, fusing subsystem is certainly going to bond the, the, the toner to the page up to 350. But what's unique about this, Jeff, is that the, we have oscillation on this carriage as, as we put paper through, this, 
fusing system moves back and forth. So why why should we care about oscillation and that technology in the system? What does that do for us? Well, if you look back on offset printing systems when you're running a small sheet and you have many pages going through, you get a wear line, Jeff, on your blanket. Okay. The same thing would want to happen here on a on, a, on an iGen system, but it doesn't. The simple fact is, with a 30 millimeter oscillation, we don't get hit with that short sheet mark when we're changing different paper sizes. So, so that technology is critical, again, to reliability and uptime and not changing these fuser rolls all the time, because when you talked about the ability to switch different paper sizes from different pick points in the trays, you have to have this technology to make the whole system work together to keep that good paper yep. handling. It, it, it complements our feeding characteristics up front there. Excellent. Let's keep on going down the paper path. What else you got to tell us today? Okay, Jeff, as we exit that fusing subsystem, we're going to go into decurlers, and then we have top and bottom decurling systems here, which will make sure that we stack and, and handle a paper reliability. So why, why do I need a decurler system? Why is that decurler system coming important coming out at the end? Jeff, it's important on any printing system. Through heat, pressure, any or, or ink being applied to a sheet, it's very important to treat the sheet through decurling systems to go to stacking. This one works based on area coverage in the media that's coming through. Jeff, it's it dynamic. Mean it, you mean it adjusts what it does based on how much ink that you have on the sheet? It actually adjusts what it does? Yeah, but more importantly, Jeff, it's gonna base it on knowing what paper's coming out of those trays. We know we're running mixed media of all different sorts. This thing knows what's coming down the way and it treats it as an exception basis based so, on what's coming through. So does that help us with the reliable stack when we get down? Is that why that decurler system is so it, important? It, absolutely, it's critical. All right, let's go look at the stacker. Jeff, here's a stacker cart for the iGen system and it allows us simply to run our paper down here, offset sets, you name it, seven by seven up to 26 inch to uh, high capacity. So um, actually when you say oscillates, you're talking about that it helps you do job sets so you can actually get the different sets out after you're done? Yeah, that's right. You know, to be, take finished product to post printing activities, they, you know, operators might want to have it offset. That's certainly a feature of the stacker. But also we can have up to up to four of these stacker cards in a configuration as why, well. Why is that important, Scott? Why should I care about having multiple stackers on my system? Honestly, in lights out operation, when we have high capacity on the feed end, when we come back here, the operator can dynamically switch or direct the job to individual stacker cards, or as they fill up, Jeff, they will dyna dynamically switch as, as as paper gets filled from one stacker to the and next. The machine won't do won't go down when it when this stacker is full and it's got to go to the next stacker. It no, go no, down. no. It automatically switches from one, from one stacker to the next. This will allow operators or operations to take their operators and to go on to other printing systems. Excellent, Scott, excellent. Well, Scott, thank you for your uh, time today. And You're thank welcome. you everybody for joining us to get a deeper look at underneath the hood on the iGen system. Next, we're gonna take a deeper look into our color management system. Thanks for spending the time.